Check it out. I guess I'm invisible. Check it out. I guess I'm invisible. Check it out. I guess I'm invisible today. Guess that you'll be seeing me around Spend your nights alone without a sound This series focuses on the houseless of Portland, Oregon and the work being done to help those living on the street. The point-in-time count of the homeless found a 10% increase from 2015 to 2017, with nearly 5,000 people sleeping outside or in a shelter each night. And I think that uh, they feel invisible, and when they're in my chair, they're not invisible. They are a king or a queen. Hi, I'm Tom Anderson. I'm hairstylist to the homeless. When somebody's homeless, their self-esteem is low, and when you look good, you feel better, you tend to behave differently. And on some of them, it's a night and day, the transformation of how they look. And then they have a radiant smile that they know they feel better, they look better. That attention, that human connection that, that is lacking in a lot of their lives. Every Thursday, uh, I go from 10 to 10, and I do an average of 36 haircuts every Thursday. Then I go over to uh, the Burnside Bridge to Night Strike, and I do about 12 to 16 haircuts there every Thursday night. Night Strike is a permitted event hosted by the nonprofit called Because People Matter, Inc. Since 2003, this community has gathered hundreds of volunteers to serve those in need every week. My name is Zach Clark, and we provide felt need resources to houseless and marginalized individuals. Clothing, uh, food, uh, we provide haircuts and dignity items like soaps and deodorants and things like that. Um, beyond that, uh, we have started a medical unit and a dental unit uh, monthly. Uh, there is a bike repair station uh, to be able to repair some of our guest bikes. Portland has a long history of organizing and providing services to those living on the street. There are over 100 groups and nonprofits working to get people the help they need. But our primary focus, everything that we do, is based around relationship, based around conversation, um, restorative humanity, if you will. It's a very natural place where people feel like somebody's listening to them, somebody's looking them in the eye. Someone wants to have a meal with them. Someone wants to be kind to them. And, uh, and I don't know if that's a, certainly not a luxury, but sometimes on the street it can be. We have a large base of people who surround Bridgetown and love what we do. So we, we have a tribe of people. We have a, you know, people who say, yeah, I'll give $25 a month. There's some sustainability in there. I came here kind of following my wife on vacation and I had never been to Portland. So I, I took it as an opportunity to, to spend a week in a place that I'd never been. And uh, I came up when we were staying with some friends and they said, what are you doing Thursday night? At first we were kind of we kind of recoiled at the idea of, like, on our vacation, you want us to do what on our vacation? Go down and serve homeless people on a what? What are you? What are you talking about? I was like, oh, people on the streets are mean and they're all these things. And I got there and they just wanted to know my story. They wanted to know why I came from Albuquerque to hang out with them. I got this chance to, to identify people on the streets, people without a house as, as people, as human beings. I kind of, at that moment I went, oh, you know? And, and for me, um, it messed me up. We're, hey, guess what, I'm moving to Portland and I get, I get to do this thing called Night Strike and I'm gonna do it every Thursday and it has just, it's rocked my world. I've been helping these people since I got here to this town. Even when I had a place to stay. I love these people. They're, they're very helpful. What they do is amazing. Um, I've been doing it for quite a while. I've been on the streets. I'm, I'm disabled and retired, and uh, I came up through these streets. This is my hometown, but I was moved 
to come down here and just really reach out to the, these folks. Even if I even if I get back off the streets, which I will soon, I'll I'll be here every week as long as my schedule permits. Me. There are way too many people in need. There's not just any one thing that brings a person to this place. There are many people. They all have a story. Uh, it's not the same circumstances. It's not the same reasons that they're here. A lot of people end up down here now based simply because of the economy. They, they lose their jobs, eventually they lose the place they live, they got nowhere to go, they're on the street for the first time in their lives. There's a dominant story out there that is told. Uh, they woke up with a job, they weren't expecting to not have a job at the end of the day, and from there, um, it spiraled. They were one paycheck away from not making rent or mortgage, or one paycheck away from not making their car payment or whatever, and, and you see the progression happen, you know, where, where next thing you know, because they're in a specialized field or a field that was struggling uh, a lot like the construction industry or something like that at that time it was really hit and you had a lot of guys in that used to have a job and didn't anymore and i see that story a lot more than the guy who the person who ran away from home and hopped the rails and fell in love with the life one of the jobs that we have is we call it a host position where their entire job is just to get coffee sit with somebody have a meal but sometimes they'll say Zach, uh, how do I, how can I tell who's, who needs, you know, who's a guest and who's a volunteer and all this stuff? And I said, beautiful, that's perfect. You know, I love that. That's, that's one of my favorite things because they're, uh, you, good. Take coffee to pee. Just be, they're being people. Like, just take them, who cares, you know? I help out with the Night Strike because I've always just had like a soft spot in my heart for people who are forgotten and I feel like a lot of times people who are living on the streets get forgotten or they have just certain things that people assume about them that are never really nice things and they forget the humanity of people. They want to show something, even a, a dollar or two, which I never expect anything, but it makes them feel good if they can give me something. And they tell me sometimes that when things get better, they're going to remember me. I can't help them with all their troubles. They have monetary troubles, mental, uh, substance abuse. I can't help them with that, but I can help them look better and feel better. Just loving people, it's a common thread that we that we share because kindness isn't isn't owned. Love is not owned by a religion. It just is. Not a it's not a rushed thing. It's a place where we invite them to stay and to be and learn about somebody, to have a relationship with someone, to come back week after week and to meet that person and play a game of checkers. They're coming from Washington and Oregon and all these different places to Portland and begin to impact someone. And that may be as small as sitting with the kid at school that nobody talks to, that may be as big as starting something that impacts a community like the community that we serve at Night Strike. I want to see this stuff, this, this thing, this model, it doesn't have to be my model, it just has to be something like this in New York, and in London, and in Chicago, and in, you know, all these different places. People need love too. You know, people are there and they need, they need help and they need love. The newest site in Oklahoma called Nightlight is now operating and BPM plans to expand in the coming years. If you'd like to know more or volunteer, please contact them at bpmpdx.org.